This video will show you how to use Google Earth to determine latitudes and longitudes of a location, distances between two points, bearings or headings, and how to use the Elevation Profile tool. Google Earth comes in two versions, the browser version and the desktop version. Only some of the functionality is available in the browser version, so we'll start with that one. First, notice that you can zoom in and out with the roller on your mouse or with the plus and minus symbol in the lower right. Let's zoom in on Hilo, Hawaii. From the left toolbar, we click on Map Styles and turn on the grid lines so we can estimate latitude and longitude of a particular point. How do we do that? We look at the grid that forms around the point X. Then we estimate the percentage of the distance between the edges that X represents. We can do that precisely with a ruler or less precisely with just our eyes and the screen as long as we add the appropriate uncertainty. In this case, it looks like X sits about three quarters of the distance from the right longitude to the left longitude. Since longitude is increasing to the left, we can figure out that distance and add it to the longitude on the right. The space between these two longitude lines is one minute. Three quarters of a minute is 45 seconds. So we add 45 seconds to the right hand longitude line to come up with a longitude of 155 degrees, four minutes and 45 seconds. We also have to add an appropriate level of uncertainty which in this case seems to be about plus or minus five seconds. That means that when I eyeballed this distance to be three quarters of a minute, I don't think it could be bigger than 50, 45 plus five, or less than 40, 45 minus five. Now let's look at latitude. Latitude is increasing as we go north, and it looks like X is close to the halfway point between the two latitude lines, which are also one minute apart. Half of a minute is 30 seconds, again with an uncertainty of about 5 seconds plus or minus. We could also use a ruler to be more precise, in which case we would have less uncertainty. Another way to find latitude and longitude of a location in Google Earth is to simply hover over the spot and read the bottom right latitude and longitude readings. Google Earth lists the latitude and longitude at all times down here for wherever your mouse happens to be hovering. However, these answers are very precise, and to figure out how much uncertainty to give to them, we need to move the cursor around a bit to represent the width of the city that we're trying to estimate, or the object we're looking at, or just to see what kind of uncertainty there is in matching the same point each time. There might be a big jump, and the best way to figure that out is to take the measurement three times. In this case, we see a jump of about two seconds in latitude and about four seconds in longitude as I hover my mouse around the point. Therefore, we return to the midpoint of X, take the latitudes and longitudes that appear there, and then add an uncertainty of plus or minus four seconds for the longitude and two seconds for latitude. Now let's review how to find the distance between two points. From the left-hand menu, click on the ruler. Notice that we can use this drop-down menu to change the unit on the ruler. Let's choose kilometers. Now we click on the starting point of our measurement, and as we move the mouse away from the spot, the distance we've traveled appears. We can use this behavior to determine our uncertainty by having the mouse hover around our second point before clicking to cement it in. In this case, I felt that I could get reasonably within 0.1 kilometers of the distance I wanted to measure. So that's the uncertainty I'll add to my answer. Now let's look at the desktop version of Google Earth, which has a little bit more functionality. Once again, let's head out to Hilo, Hawaii and turn on the grid lines. To do that, we go to the View menu and then click on the box that says Grid. To find latitude and longitude of a point, like before, we can make an estimate between the grid lines, or we can zoom in and out using the point and click method, reading the numbers on the lower right. Notice that these numbers in the desktop version provide a lot more precision than in the browser version. Notice the decimal points in the seconds place. We still have the same uncertainty in our answers because we're not certain of the exact spot we're clicking. So before we give an answer, we'll have to round what Google Earth provides us to match the uncertainty we know to be true. 
For example, if our point is within four seconds of a click, to get more precise than one second would be meaningless given our uncertainty. Measuring distance works the same way in the desktop version as it does in the browser version. We click on one spot and then move our cursor to the second spot before clicking again. And of course, we will add the uncertainty that represents how well we think we captured the exact length, including how carefully we clicked on the starting point or ending point or even knew its exact location. The other thing that we can do with the desktop version of Google Earth is to get the heading or bearing, which is the direction that we are looking or traveling, relative to north. In particular, if you face due north and rotate clockwise, you will move through the angles from 0 to 360 degrees. This is the oceanographer's method of measuring a bearing or heading, just a number from 0 to 360. You have to know that it was measured by facing north and then rotating clockwise. Notice that the answers provided here by Google Earth are measured from the starting point to the end point. So the order of your clicks is important. And if you get it wrong, your answer will be 180 degrees off. The answers provided by Google Earth are always in the oceanographer's format. Geology students will have to convert that to the geologist method, which is a measurement from due north or due south, either to the east or the west, and never more than 90 degrees. The format of your answer would then be something like north 45 east or south 2 degrees west. Next thing to look at in the desktop version of Google Earth is the path tool. The ruler tool here has many settings. We've just used the line option for the ruler. Now let's use the path option. Notice that with this option, there's a little box you can check called show elevation profile. Now when we click twice between two points, we create a path that tells us the length of the path and gives us a topographic profile. We can now see the elevation of the land along that path as though we're looking from the side in cross section. The horizontal scale and vertical scale are different in this case, so look carefully at your numbers. This tool is excellent for checking out a hiking route ahead of time. Finally, how do we enter latitudes and longitudes into Google Earth to get to the place we want to go? Order and format matter. Google Earth expects us to first enter our latitude and then our longitude with a comma between the two. We do not put in any units or directions. Instead, we enter our number for degrees with a space, minutes, space, and seconds, comma, then longitude. How do we distinguish whether we're talking about east or west of the prime meridian, or north and south of the equator? Positive numbers represent north for latitude and east for longitude. Negative numbers represent south for latitude and west for longitude. Once you've entered your numbers, click Search to travel to that location. Remember, you can confirm that you entered your latitude and longitude correctly by looking at the number that's in the bottom right of the window. Just hover your mouse over your location. Mm -hmm.